afternoon. Uh, glad everyone could come today. Uh, before I get into the particulars about each uh, student athlete, I need to make sure that I uh, just make comment about the number of people that helped us on campus throughout this recruiting process. And as you guys know, with early signing date now being third weekend or third Wednesday in December, uh, this process starts long before it traditionally has in years past. Uh, this starts you know, long into or early into most of these student athletes' junior year. Um, getting them up here for junior days multiple times, getting them up here for camp uh, is still our number one recruiting avenue. Uh, just having the experience to be with these kids for two to three days is, is so critical in their evaluation process. Um, and then all the faculty, the administration, uh, even boosters uh, locally who were helping us uh, get to and from some home visits this weekend was, uh, was big time for, for this class and for our staff as well. Um, you know, the first, the first group of kids that, that I think uh, I need to discuss are probably just our, our North Dakota kids. Uh, I think we got the three best football players in the state this year. Uh, you talk about da Dawson Weisenberg, uh, Jaden Claybo, and Caden Kuntz. Uh, many of you, the, the Claybo name's familiar. Uh, Chuck Claybo being an outstanding offensive lineman who played here, uh, a good friend of mine in town. Uh, it's neat to see uh, the legacy, uh, the, the, the family names stay the same. The faces are different. Uh, and I know these three young men are super excited to be Bison. Uh, have grown up being Bison fans, Bison supporters. Uh, and uh, I know their parents, too, are, are uh, uh, tickled that uh, these young men are going to be able to play for the Bison. Um, I think both Dawson and, uh, and Jaden will be outstanding tight ends for us. Tyler Roll is extremely excited. Uh, they'll join the crew chiefs, uh, the nickname of the tight ends, and, and will do an outstanding job. Give these young men a year with Coach Kramer, uh, and I think the, the sky's the limit for them. Uh, Caden Kuntz, is, Kuntz excuse me, uh, is an exciting young man, uh, a, a big-time track athlete, uh, a slot receiver that I think can make people miss. Uh, you look at his track times, and I think sometimes those are deceiving uh, when you look at North Dakota times versus the rest of the country. Uh, as, as you guys know, sometimes track in the state of North Dakota is a couple meets in May, uh, weather depending. Well, this young man, he's a 23-plus foot long jumper. And I, and I don't care where we're recruiting kids from St. Louis or Florida. To me, that's a big jump uh, and, and shows the explosiveness of the young man. Uh, and he was one of the few young men that I didn't have a great connection with because of my, my defensive past here. And so this weekend, I spent a lot of time with him and his parents. And uh, I, I'm glad that, that this is where he chose to be. And I think uh, he's going to have an outstanding career moving forward. Um, I think, you know, as, as we progress through uh, the press conference, I'm going to talk more in terms of position groups, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll make reference to certain individuals. Uh, you guys probably have a list of names out there already, but uh, in the defensive line, uh, we grouped them together, defensive ends, defensive tackles. I think we, we have some outstanding, and if you just look at their accolades, uh, these, these kids, their, their accolades speak for themselves. Uh, you're, you know, Javier Derrett, 5A Defensive Player of the Year in Kansas, state championship football team, uh, a young man that's going to be a difference maker, more of a nose, a big body kid, 6'1", 300 pounds right now, uh, is going to be a, a, a bowling ball uh, for us and be able to really displace the offensive line of scrimmage uh, in, in years to come. Uh, the twins, Eli Mostart and Will Mostart, uh, good luck telling them apart. I, I kind of have, have figured it out a little bit, uh, but probably half the time I'm wrong. Uh, and, and, they're, and, and thank goodness they're, they're good sports about it. Um, a funny story, I went on a home visit this weekend, and, and their mom said she's wrong about half the time as, as well. So I don't feel as bad. Um, these young men come from Lakeville North, same high school as Greg Menard. Uh, those of you who follow Minnesota high school football, they were state champs in the big class this year. Um, when, when you just say they had to beat, Eden Prairie twice to win the state championship this year, once in the regular season, once in the, in the, cha uh, in the championship game. That right there tells you this is a pretty good football team they're coming from, uh, Eden Prairie been, being the perennial power uh, in Minnesota. Uh, both of them are, are AAU basketball players, uh, 6'2", 6'3", 250 pounds. Uh, we're looking at them being big six techniques. Uh, and then I think with uh, a little Jim Cramer and Dining Center, uh, one of them's probably going to end up being a dynamic three technique for us as we continue to grow and, and, and those guys develop. And then the last one that I'll, that I'll make comment on is, is Reed Ryan. Uh, Reed Ryan was the Defensive Player of the Year in the state of Wisconsin, uh, had a number of offers from MAC schools, uh, came to campus a number of times, and, and is one of those players that just fell in love with, with, with the culture, 
with, with, with the environment, uh, with Fargo. Uh, I tell you what, he, he's going to be a difference maker. He, he's a big, long kid, fits into the uh, you know, Stanley Jones, Caleb Butler size of, of football player. Uh, and uh, it, it'll be fun to get him here in the summer and see what we can do with him. Uh, and again, you know, going back to you know, the redshirt rule and the new redshirt rule in the NCAA, you know, all these kids that, that we signed, I think, will have the ability to play in those four games for us. We need to identify these kids can, can maybe fill or close some holes that we have in our roster currently looking into the two, 2019 season. Linebackers. Uh, of course, this was one of my favorite areas to recruit, uh, having been the linebacker coach here. Uh, we signed four players that I think are all difference makers and, and, and all have kind of a unique skill set to them. Uh, Luke Dwyer is the first one, uh, a long athlete from Lake Zurich. Uh, 2017, they were state runners-up. They actually got beat by Batavia, uh, who uh, was a uh, Luke Wirtz's high school team. Uh, excellent football program. Uh, if you know anything about uh, Northwest Suburb football uh, in, in Chicago, uh, physically, he's going to remind a lot of our fans of a MJ Stump. 6'3", 6'2", long, lanky kid that can run, more of a will linebacker position going forward. Dylan Hendricks, uh, State of Wisconsin Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, for those of you who, who've had interviews or we've visited before, uh, you know I'm partial to quarterbacks moving to defense. Well, here's another quarterback that's going to be moving to defense. Uh, he, we're going to move him to the Mike Linebacker position. 6'2", 220 pounds, ran for almost 7,000 yards in high school. Uh, I mean, quarterback power was the flavor at Pulaski High School. But uh, uh, outstanding, outstanding athlete. Uh, he is an elite level rugby player, uh, has been to California, been all over the country, participating in USA Rugby. Uh, at one time, he wasn't even sure he was going to play college football because of the opportunities of participating in the Olympics for the rugby team. Um, Nick Kubitz. Dubuque, Iowa. I, I always say we need more Iowa people down here, up here uh, in Fargo. And so I'm glad to, we, we got a young man from Dubuque, Iowa, uh, another Will linebacker type kid, um, 6'2", 197, 200 pounds right now, uh, track athlete as well, uh, plays in a good league, 4A football in the state of Iowa. Uh, will we'll do really good things for us. And then lastly, uh, probably uh, the young man that received the most recognition when he committed to NDSU, Luke Wirtz. Uh, from Batavia, Illinois. They're 25-2 and two the last two years he's played football. Uh, was a team captain, um, Mr. Everything for, the, for their football program. Uh, had over 20 offers, many of them FBS. Had everyone in the Missouri Valley and uh, had, had one Power 5 school as well. Uh, this was a team, all of these recruits were, were, was, a, was a team effort by our staff, uh, by our support people as well. Uh, Luke's going to be a dynamic football player for us. Dad actually works for John Deere, uh, and this is his territory. So it worked out pretty well that uh, Dad will uh, be able to uh, have some uh, work-related expenses up in Fargo, I think. But uh, he'll be around, and, and that's good. Uh, talked to Luke last night, um, has a young – has a family that's all about football, uh, has a young brother that's a really good football player as well that he played with. Uh, in the defensive backs, uh, Anthony Coleman uh, will be a, a great corner out of the Des Moines area, uh, played 4A football in the state. Terrell Hall, uh, one of the top 32 football players in the state of Minnesota, uh, was just recognized this weekend uh, by the Minnesota Vikings on their all-state team. Uh, Many of you know I, 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 I spent nine years of, of my career in Winona, had created a great relationship with Coach Casilius, the, the high school coach there, and, and kudos to him for helping us through this process. Uh, Terrell's a, an outstanding young man, and you guys are going to uh, learn to love him quickly. And then lastly is Julian Ladarchek. For those of you who are, who are interested on how you uh, say that, uh, by looking at it, you would not ever guess that. Uh, going to be a great safety force. Long kid, uh, probably built li a lot like a Jackson Brown um, you know, 6'2", 190 pounds, uh, but has room to grow and uh, really excited about him. In our defense and in our scheme, you know, the safety position is so critical, uh, kind of the, besides the Mike Backer, the other quarterback of the defense. And so finding a young man that it, football smarts are out of this uh, off the chart and then has the physical, schools to, uh, physical skills to play is big time. Up front, uh, on the offensive line, uh, in the Rams room, uh, a couple difference makers. And I mean that because physically they're just different than maybe what you've seen in the past. Uh, Hunter Pontius and Jake Rock both fill that tackle size, tackle role. Uh, a year ago we signed a number of interior offensive linemen. Uh, this year our emphasis was signing a couple tackles. Uh, Hunter's 6'7", probably pushing 6'8". Uh, 
I know we have him down as 247 this weekend. We weighed him. He was 275. Uh, he's currently playing hockey for Buffalo High School. Uh, he would be 7'3 on skates, I have to believe. Uh, but uh, great kid. Dad was an offensive lineman at the school up north. Uh, and so uh, it, it's good to see that we, uh, uh, we were able to talk him out of uh, heading up there and, and join the Bison. Uh, Jake Rock, an offensive lineman from Kettle Moraine High School, 6'6", 250 pounds. Another big, long tackle body. That's going to be a, a great addition to the Rams. And then lastly is, is Brandon Westberg. Uh, Brandon is an off, uh, interior offensive lineman, has played center, uh, has played guard. Uh, Brandon, we have first identified at team camp. His high school team has traditionally or annually come, and come to uh, Fargo in the summers and participated in our team camp. Uh, we've probably known about him since he was a freshman. He came to team camp. We invited him back to the individual camp. Over the course of the summer, we probably spent upwards of seven days with him on the football field. Brandon is, and everyone knows, you know, the competition for Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. He was one of the eight finalists for Mr. Football. Not very often you have an offensive lineman listed as Mr. Football. I'd be like an offensive lineman or a D lineman all right, attending the Heisman ceremony. I, I think it tells you the respect that he has and the difference maker that he was throughout, throughout the year. Uh, tight ends and fullbacks, Logan Hofstedt, brother to Mason Hofstedt, who's currently a, a member of the football team. Uh, Mason's, or excuse me, Logan's going to play fullback. Jaden Claybo and Dawson, already had talked about him a little bit, uh, super excited. And then Travis Yonke, a young man that had a ton of recruiting go through his high school, through his home. Uh, again, Once again, Tyler Roll staying rich in that uh, tight end room. Uh, th four guys here that are going to be difference makers for us uh, as we continue to grow. Uh, and you guys have seen offensively, our tight ends play such a huge role, not just in our run game, setting the edge, but also in our pass game. Skill position-wise, uh, running Jalen Bussey, uh, slight in stature, 5'5", 160 pounds, but a lot like Ty Brooks, an electric ball carrier, guy you get in the, in the open space. Uh, you can throw bubbles, screens out of the backfield, uh, really going to be a difference maker for us. And then special teams is wise as, as well. He's also a kick and punt returner. Caden Kuntz, we already had discussed, and then Jacob Lippi would be the other wide receiver that's coming, uh, a young man from Port Washington, Milwaukee. Uh, and then lastly, uh, our specialist, uh, Griffin Crosa from Ohio, uh, kind of a unique get. Uh, that's a Coach Williams uh, find. Uh, Coach Williams, being a, a native of Cincinnati, had some inroads. And, and, and Griffin's brother kicks at uh, Western Illinois. Uh, we're excited about Griffin. Griffin will be with us in January. He will start school. He's already graduated from high school. Uh, so we'll have some open competition this spring uh, in the kicking position. And then lastly, the, uh, the position that most people want to talk about is uh, Zeb Noland. Uh, Zeb's a young man from uh, uh, Watkinsville, Georgia, via Iowa State University. Uh, had been there for three years, used his red shirt this last year. I uh, threw for three, over 300 yards against the University of Oklahoma. Uh, came to us and, and said he was looking for a different opportunity. Uh, we had conversations with Coach Campbell. Uh, he'd been up here on a, uh, on a top secret uh, official visit, uh, which we must have done a good job because everyone in here didn't know that he was here. Um, I spent the, the majority of the last week getting to know uh, Zeb just a little bit better. Again, I, I talked about on Monday in my press conference, my number one goal is I got to do a better job connecting with the offensive players uh, and especially the offensive recruits going forward. He's excited to be here, already has a place to live. He will be here January 5th. Uh, at that time, his number first, first request and he understands that our team will take a couple weeks off probably, let the bodies heal after the uh, national championship game. He will begin workouts with Coach Kramer immediately when he gets on campus. He wants to be ready to go. Uh, I think open competition, it makes everyone better. Uh, we continually try to push the envelope here at NDSU, uh, and the only way for us to get better is to continue to get better football players and, and create an environment where our players have to strive to be the best. Uh, at that time, I kind of buzzed through some of the, the particulars of each of these kids. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, I'd be ready to field any. Matt, when did uh, Zeb Nolan really become a possibility for you that this was something you had to address? Uh, it, was, it was earlier uh, in the fall, uh, probably as we hit the month of November. Uh, it became conversation. Uh, we needed to handle it the right way, especially with the current quarterbacks on our, uh, on our roster. Uh, all the quarterbacks on our roster were brought in, and this was discussed uh, face-to-face -face with them. So it, it was no shock to, 
uh, to Holden or to Trey uh, that we were looking to bring in a potential transfer quarterback that could give us just more depth. Uh, both those guys responded the way we expected them to. There's a reason why they're here. They said, bring on the competition. Let's do this. We know, Coach, all you're trying to do is make this thing, the, the, the program better. Do you have any interest in maybe in the next period trying to get a, a, a high school quarterback and, and bring someone in just to keep one every year? Uh, that was the other unique thing with Zeb is, is he only has two years left, and so he does spread out our scholarships a little bit in that room right now. Uh, we, we're extremely young. If, if you look at our quarterback situation, we, we might. We need to let the dust settle a little bit. Uh, I'd like to say my priority is, is on three weeks from now right now uh, or two and a half. Uh, but we will address, you know, we, ha we, we do have the ability to sign a couple kids in the traditional signing day. Matt, obviously a huge number with 25. Is there a specific group that you're still looking to add some pieces to in the late signing period that you'll be focusing on? I can't imagine there's a lot of scholarship. No, there's not. Uh, I would say at this time right now it's going to be best available. A uh, difference maker, maybe a young man that might have uh, slipped through the crack. Uh, I would not rule out a potential four-year walk-on, or if you, excuse me, a four-year transfer. Uh, maybe someone that we might have recruited once before uh, that is is unsatisfied with playing time or where they're at currently. Overall, how did this experience go with the transition from Chris to you, just on, on your personal level and as well as the feedback from these young men? Because it can be a scary time for a lot of people, and you guys seem to have just rolled as smooth as ever. Well, I think personally I, I took it as a challenge because this was probably going to be the f first evaluation phase of, of Coach Entz's short career as the head football coach was can you keep this recruiting class together? Uh, this weekend we had uh, 10 kids on campus, and, and my number one goal was to spend as much time with the offensive kids as possible um, just because I felt like I, I had a good, solid relationship with all the defensive kids currently. Uh, there was a lot of late-night phone calls. Let's get done with practice, watch film. And, and I was in my office calling kids up, answering questions, communicating with parents, uh, doing everything I could. Uh, and our staff did an outstanding job as well. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring them up. Uh, very thorough. I mean, our, our, our guys, you know, this is big for us. we we got to continue to move this program forward in the best way. The, the heartbeat of this program is going to still be recruiting at the end of the day. we we got to get the right people in here. Valuable was the feedback from those kids that had been through this situation when it transitioned from Bull to Kleiman, did you talk to any of those guys about the most important thing they heard, most valuable thing they heard, or did you just kind of go off of gut and experience? Well, we went, I just went off of experience. I did talk to a few guys. Just you make, make, tell me the things I shouldn't do was, was more what I was looking for. Um, I did address uh, when, I, when I saw the new recruits or we had the official visit this weekend, I did address and, and make comment that five years ago, some of these seniors, this senior class of 20-plus kids, was in the same boat you guys were. They had to make a decision, and I understand it's a, a life-changing de decision, and I was asking for them to put some trust in me and, and understand that this program's not going anywhere. Uh, the, th you know, the things that have made it special throughout uh, the last four or five decades are still going to be here. Uh, different face in front of the room, but uh, uh, the, the, the things that we emphasize, the things that we think are important here will continue to, to be important. Uh, the, the two questions I asked every kid that I sat down with this weekend, uh, do you love football? And more importantly, do you love the process of football? We all know there's only 11 games a year that are guaranteed. Well, there's 350 days you have to prepare for 11. It's unlike every other sport. You can play multiple basketball games in a day. You can play double headers. There's no such thing as two football games in a day. Uh, you're limited in your, in your dates of competition. And so we have to get the right people here that, that embrace – all the other days, and, and see those as opportunities to get better. And, and so far, we've done a great job of identifying those kids, and I think this class uh, you know, emulates that as well. North State recruits are always well sought after regionally uh, every year, but did you feel like, not necessarily even other teams in the Valley, but other programs were zeroing in on your kids once Kleiman was announced as the other coach? Did you feel like they were a little bit more aggressive? I, I, there's, there's, I don't think. I know they were. Um, you know, there was uh, Luke Wirtz all of a sudden got an offer from UMass. UMass just went through a coaching change. Well, I'm sure they pulled up North Dakota State's committed kids. Um, you know, it, it is unique you know, when, when other schools are trying to get in the door or, or get into the house of somebody or making phone calls. Uh, you know, I, I guess apparently they're not comfortable with the kids they have committed, so they have to come try to find ours. So I, I, I tell you, probably speaks volumes for the quality of kids that we have that are committed here today. How stressful was the last seven days on this front then? 
just overall on, just on this on the recruiting front just recruiting, now. it was it was stressful uh you know once we had an idea uh what coach Kleiman was going to do uh there was a day or two where I didn't know where I what I was going to do um and so I just made the most of it and continued to stay in touch with these kids. And, uh, you know, I, I thought regardless, if, if I'm still a linebacker coach in NDSU, these four guys, I'm, I'm going to make sure these four guys are playing for me uh, on a personal note, being selfish, because uh, I think they're pretty special. And, uh, Jim Kramer on two or three occasions today. Has that situation been locked up? What? He's working with our kids right now. I just walked, left the weight room, and uh, they were in there for a lift, and then they have uh, team conditioning this afternoon role and you've done an excellent job as kind of as the Twin Cities recruiter. Yep. Head coach is generally more of a, a closer. Will you assign the Twin Cities to another? I will. Okay. I will. But I, I'll, I'll continue. Here's, I anticipate going forward in the spring and even in, in the month of January, I hope to get out with all my coaches uh, a, a couple days so I can make some connections. I need to do a better job and, and get, get into the northwest suburbs of Illinois and shake some hands. Uh, as a coordinator, I've been in some buildings, uh, but it's 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 at the 11th hour uh, or to see a, a commit and just make sure they're good. I need to be able to, to have a familiar face with some of these coaches in, in areas that we need to be uh, winning. A stamp of approval and unwavering support from administration, the community, <coughs> your current team. Today you've got 24, 25 guys who showed their commitment to you and their faith in you as a head coach. Can you kind of Talk about what it meant as those started to roll in and, and these were locked up, that, that the future is bright and these kids see you as their head coach as well. I don't know if I've really thought about it until you brought that question up. Uh, to me, it's, it's we, us, and ours, and, and that's what I did. Uh, I was excited today as I would have been if I was just the assistant coach. Um, you know, it, it is, it, it's, it's gratifying to know that people believe in you. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. I was named the head football coach on, on Thursday afternoon, and the first text I got was Jaden Claybo uh, telling me that, congrats, coach, I can't wait to be a bison. So, you know, little things like that do go a long ways. Uh, Jaden's a superstar. A lot of the other people, uh, you know, were very uh, reassuring during our visit that, coach, this is where we want to be, and, 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 and your staff and you uh, continue to, to tell us why. This, this trip, this official visit just verified what we already knew. In your five years here, how have you seen this program and the recruiting, you know, grow from when you first stepped on campus to where you are now? Well, I think part of it is, is, is just the, the, the support we have with recruiting in the office. Uh, Hank Jacobs was our recruiting coordinator, did an unbelievable job. Uh, he has some interns and some student help that assist him. Re recruiting is, is, is a year-round thing. Uh, you know, if, if you don't do it and you, and you avoid it, you're going to look like a bum eventually. You, you got to do it all the time. Uh, and so we're going to continue to, uh, to use that model. Uh, I think there's things we can continue to do to grow recruiting-wise. I, I know one of the things that's great here is, is we win a lot of football games, and that gra grabs people's attention. But we, we still need to get out there earlier. Uh, and, and I think we could, there's, a, there's a level of, of player out there that we have yet to tap that we can get into. Uh, and, again, the, the better players you find, the better product you hope you can put on the football field. Fargo kids, uh, you still see them as tight ends down the do. line? Do I, I see uh, both Jaden and Dawson as tight ends. Uh, even though uh, I, had the, I was fortunate enough to, to see them both play in person this year, um, and uh, uh, both of them played are, are excellent defensive ends too. So I, I would, we'll start them at tight end. Uh, you guys know it, it, it's not a there, – there's no set stone. Uh, kids evolve, kids move. Uh, there, there's always position, position changes along the way, depending on how kids develop physically or mentally. How much of the four-game rule do you take into account from what you learned this year to apply when these guys get on campus in August to say, we've got a better blueprint to see who can be on the field come September 1st? I, I think it was critical. This year was good for us, uh, trying to find and, and juggle what games we're going to make people available for. Dimitri Williams was another young man that we ultimately, at the end of the day, we wanted to redshirt. And uh, we, we were able to. If he had to play against South Dakota State, that'd have been Game Four. Uh, now, you know, think of him. He's going to get a redshirt year, and his fourth game is going to be in the national championship. Darn! I get to play one more game this year. Jacobs' role something that you're immediately trying to kind of replace? Uh, those are things that I, I need to discuss with the administration. I, I hope to. Uh, you know, we're, we're at a little bit of a lull with with signing date being over, uh, but we do need to ramp it back up because right now, 2020 is on people's minds, and, and it should be on the Bison's mind.
Matt, how big is it to get recruits in here during the playoffs, you know, just to get them in that type of environment? Uh, it, it's extremely important. I mean, we had probably throughout the course of the playoffs, uh, the Montana State Colgate, we had three kids in each of those games. Then we had 10 in for the uh, uh, for the semifinal game. And uh, thank goodness we won. It had been uncomfortable on uh, on Sunday to address them if we had not. But uh, uh, it, it's good. I mean, I, you talk about a, a home field advantage, uh, an unbelievable venue uh, to, to bring those kids in. Uh, all of them were, were coach, this is way better than what we ever saw. They all, a number of them had YouTubed it and things. Uh, and, and our fans just the energy they brought on set on excuse me Friday night was 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 top shelf and I appreciate them wholeheartedly for doing that and then uh, uh, it, it, it does bring a smile to my face when when they start playing some music late in the fourth quarter.